Hi guys, I'm here with Christoph and we're going to do a lesson on the Panov variation of the Karakhan, I believe. Um, but I think we'll be talking about, you know, just the Karakhan as well. And, and a lot of people, I think, in chat play the Karakhan. I'm seeing lots of excitement already. Um, but yeah, I basically, I was looking at the Keep It Simple for Black course on Chessable and I sent Christoph a message saying how much I hated playing against the Panov. And he said that he liked playing against the Panov. So I really needed to see how that was possible <laughs> um and so yeah we're doing a lesson i'm really excited for it yeah we'll, we'll focus on on opening prep huh? caro Khan, you you mentioned mostly the panov is a problem but mm -hmm. if there are any other questions we'll go there and uh see see where where it leads more or less hello to the chat i'm reading the chat so if you have any questions directly for me, I, I try to read them, but uh, yeah, I think we'll we'll manage. So um, yeah, shall we dive right in and talk a little yeah. bit about, about sure, the let's go for it. variation? Mm -hmm. So um, we have the board already, I think, set for the starting position of the caro. Mm -hmm. And the Panov variation is typically named after Russian player Panov. Yeah, nobody really knows the person anymore but the opening line is still around so the pawn off starts after white takes on d5 which still could be the exchange variation i mean white does not have to play the pawn to c4 but if they do it's the pawn off before we um go go any deeper here and the theory is only starting um one thing that can be mentioned is that white does not necessarily have to play c4 straight away. They mm -hmm. could also start with knight f3, which is somewhat interesting. And we, we can briefly talk about that. Because when they do this, they could still play c4 on the next move. Uh, there's Sorry, the... can yeah. I just ask, do you want me to turn off my eval and lines? Should I have them off? Uh, I don't think so. You can just keep it as it is. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's a no worries. So okay, sure. why could still play C4, which mm -hmm. is kind of important as we don't want to make a move that doesn't fit into what we want to do against C4. So there's a slight move order thing going on. For example, if we would play, let's say E6, not a good move, they would play C4 or can play C4. And we have something that we would not play against C4. So against C4, we don't go e6 in my suggested repertoire and we want to make sure that we are in line it's it's relatively easy however because you can just play the knight to c6 or the knight to f6 those two knight moves look good anyway so it's not a real issue here right just it's, it's good to remember that c4 still can happen so let's have a look at c4 then which is the start of the pun off so um it, we, we, you mentioned already that I said um, I, I generally like to play against it. I, I mm. don't really mind if it happens. Yeah. And um, I have a clear reason for that. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, I have a clear reason for that because generally speaking, I am happy if in most cases, it's kind of a, it's never going to happen in every single game, but in most mm -hmm. cases, I will have the better pawn structure. Okay. Yeah, the thing is, after they play c4, there is mostly one pawn structure popping up, and, and you're aware mm -hmm. of that, the isolated um, pawn. Yeah. Isolated mm -hmm. pawn. And generally speaking, the isolated d pawn is a static weakness, something that very long term you can play against. Mm -hmm. And I generally like these kind of situations. It kind of feels, at least to me, in my... Like, my, my chest taste, let's say, it feels good to know that in the long run, I'm going to be okay. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like all the, the basic features are fine. What we're talking mm -hmm. about here is just this to show that the C and D pawn, like the white is attacking our D pawn, we could take it or white could take the pawn. And in both cases, the D pawn is isolated. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to, to, to suggest this move now, but I just want to show if we would ever take white recaptures, then there is this isolated D4 pawn. It's mm -hmm. 
yeah, it's kind of lonely in the middle of the board. It doesn't have um, yeah, a partner pawn to cover it, and it's it's weak in the long run. And in my mind, if I play against the pawn off, I in a way only have to let's say survive the initial initiative that they throw against me. And if I can do that, I'm generally okay. And I'm not better, right? It's not like black is better. Yeah, but sure. If you kind of let's say don't screw it up at the beginning, <laughs> you're generally okay, right? And this mm -hmm. is something that I generally like. Yeah. So mm -hmm. after c4, as I said, they can take on d5, we can take on c4. There's mm -hmm. only a third possible pawn structure that can sometimes happen. Um, white could push the pawn forward, the c pawn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's some, something also that, that happens. Um, do you have a particular scenario that you're uncomfortable with in the pawn off? Is it something like in general, like a certain structure or something that you feel bad about? Um, I don't like when the when the queen comes out to, you know, b3 and they get this kind of like pressure here and maybe pressure mm -hmm. here and 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 because I, I usually put the knights out and then I realize that I don't actually know what I'm doing with the center. I don't know when when anybody takes, if anybody does, or how I'm supporting it, or if they're actually threatening to take, you know, all sorts of things. I just feel like because it's so different um, to, I think, well, it's different to the other Karakhan structures that I'm more used to. So I just feel, I don't know, I, I feel like um, my intuition is never right. And I just don't know how to handle the positions at all. You're definitely right in stating that white is putting pressure on d5 and they could indeed mm -hmm. <clears throat> increase that by playing queen b3 and queen b3 is a very prominent move in mm -hmm. in, this, in these lines i think one thing that uh, in general you have to think about here first of all i can put knight f6 on the board maybe yeah this is kind of a, mm -hmm. a given move that we would play that right so yeah we give more support to the d pawn and now white is <clears throat> generally playing knight c3. They could also mm -hmm. play knight f3, but this is at best some kind of transposition. So I want to put that on the board and kind of consider mm -hmm. here in this position what options we have. The, the main thing here is to decide what we want to do with the, the bishop on f8. I kind of I want to paint that. Did, does mm -hmm. that, work? Did that work? Yeah, yeah. Not a very strong paint, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the bishop on f8, yeah. We we have to mm -hmm. get this out somehow. And of course, there are two options. You can play with e6 in a way and get it mm -hmm. developed maybe to e7 or to b4. So this is actually a total main line and, and fine. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad move. That's one option. The other option, black could try to play g6 and get the bishop to g7. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, on a very general level, what would you prefer? Um, so I have been playing the French as well, so I'm not unfamiliar with blocking in my light squared bishop, but also I, I would be, I think I would be okay with the G6 systems as well. Um, I'm just probably less familiar with that. Yeah. I, I don't usually feel in Kesso the dark squared bishop in the Karakhan. So yeah. I'm just probably a bit less familiar with that. If you think about the upcoming pawn structure, there mm -hmm. will be very likely that isolated d pawn. Mm -hmm. And we want to pressure the pawn. Yeah. And it's really the bishop on g7 is ideally placed to, mm -hmm. to get pressure on the pawn. And if we can develop with g6 bishop g7, then we would also avoid e6, which makes our c8 bishop bad. Yeah. So if you think about this on a, on a conceptual level, like if, if we just could play whatever we wanted, we mm -hmm. probably would want to go g6. Yeah. Because the bishop on g7 looks at that weak pawn. Mm -hmm. And if um, white is completely, is playing slow moves that are not so critical at all, then um, that, that would work absolutely fine. I want mm -hmm. to start there and just have yeah. a brief look at g6. If cool. white is playing very slow now, nothing really too challenging. Let's say they develop with the knight, 
we develop here, they put the bishop out and, and both sides castle. This mm -hmm. is a really nice position for black. We long term have a look at this pawn. We can maybe take on c4 or they will take and we get our pieces out very harmoniously. So the bishop can maybe get out to g4 later or to f5. How can I unpaint actually? <laughs> How do I get rid of the arrows? <laughs> oh, um, I think you okay. just right, right click, right click just maybe? Again. Okay, so I, I managed them out. Yeah, oh, click anywhere. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So so here we have a very natural development. The, the knight mm -hmm. can come here to put pressure on d4. The bishop can get out. That looks really comfortable. Mm -hmm. However, it is not so easy to get g6 actually played. That is the thing. If we go back here to this starting position, mm -hmm. if black goes g6 here, white <clears throat> has a, a pretty strong um, move here. And it's just this one move that is annoying. That is queen mm -hmm. b3. You already mentioned this idea. Yeah. <coughs> and this is, in fact, a bit of a problem because now yeah. the capture is not so great. And white is threatening to win d5. Mm -hmm. The capture is not so great. Hmm. And this is already pretty bad. Yeah. So what black would need to do here is to sacrifice the d5 pawn. And this is indeed a possibility. This is a variation that can be played, something like this. But you are pawn down with okay. black. This is not um, completely terrible. For example, this variation is recommended by Sam Shankland in one of his courses. Okay. Sam is reaching this from c4, c6 on the first move, c4, c6. Oh, okay. Yeah. That could lead to a Karo Khan as well. So Sam mm -hmm. hasn't done a course on the Karo, but he can get the Pano from c4, mm -hmm. c6. So here, black is a pawn down, but it, it's not a totally terrible variation. But what I wondered is, when I looked at this here, can I get mm. G6 in somewhere else? Can I some can I play G6 in a better way, for example? Mm -hmm. And at the end, uh, you end up with this move, which is very natural. Because the knight develops to a good square, we put pressure on the D pawn, and maybe we can still play G6 on the next move. And in fact, we could play G6 if again white plays something very slow, like bishop e3 or something which is really really slow mm -hmm. the problematic moves here are the ones that are a little bit more aggressive and white has two moves that are mostly played bishop g5 or knight f3 mm -hmm. the queen b3 idea that you mentioned that you're worried about is mostly happening in the knight f3 variations so shall we start with that one Yes. I find that whenever someone plays the pan of against me, it's because they are aggressive. So I don't really get these slow pan offs, I don't think. <laughs> They're always trying to crush me before I get castled. Yeah, but, but <laughs> you would see, sometimes you get the slow, the slow lines. In particular, yeah. once, we, once we look at this here a little bit, mm -hmm. it's interesting, again, mm -hmm. to consider the, the different options that Black has. And I think... I'm now looking at stuff with you that I don't really recommend to play, but I think okay. it's good to understand why. Like, okay. what is the, how are the, the mechanics working, let's say, uh, to better understand what we're ultimately doing. Mm -hmm. So um, here, Black has um, a couple of lines available. The most popular move is Bishop to G4. Mm -hmm. There's also g6, which is also kind of logical. We thought about g6 one move before. And then there's the move that I'm recommending in my course, that is a6, which is hmm, yeah, a bit, bit odd. It looks a bit odd, yeah, this move. But it is pretty good, as I was surprised to, to learn when I did the research. But before we get to, to this a6 suggestion, let's just figure out what happens after g6 and bishop g4. So if we think about chess as a purely like mathematical game, like perfect play, computers calculate everything, then bishop g4 is the best move here. Mm -hmm. It's probably equalizing the whole thing. 
but it's it has some drawbacks it, it leads to extremely long variations and they're also very drawish here after c takes d5 and this is important this is the only really critical try white has to as you said yeah white has to play aggressively so take mm. and queen b3 this is the line that white is normally playing when bishop g4 is on the board and here it's getting very tactical like you know, they attack already yeah. d5 they attack b7 and mm -hmm. those lines um yeah get, get very concrete you have to to have to know stuff there's only um one thing that black can really play here which is which is okay for for black is to take mm -hmm. and then e6 and white takes here and black takes here and it, it's an extremely long variation so it's and it's highly tactical you have to go with the king to e7 it's kind of scary <laughs> actually if you see that first <laughs> But this is kind of worked out to be okay mm -hmm. for black. It's just like, yeah. it, it goes from a theory perspective, like to move 20, 25 and so on. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I didn't want to recommend when I was thinking about what do you want to suggest here? Because it's extremely, um, yeah, it takes a lot of effort to learn this. Yeah, It's not super attractive because if white knows this stuff, you get some end game that's tough to win. Mm. So I'm not a huge fan of the line, but if you just want to like solve chess in a way, yeah, what is the absolute best thing to do? It's probably bishop g4. It's just not so much fun. So this is why I did not go bishop g4 in my repertoire. Mm -hmm. Then you could go g6. And this is um, maybe um, the move that you would want to play. Again, uh, g6 is, is a move that we like to play. Mm -hmm. What white can take it's again this um idea and here it looks like black has problems um equalizing the game <clears throat> it's actually kind of interesting because if black takes on c3 white has a really fascinating move they don't need to recapture but they can play this one ah uh. <laughs> it's really fun yeah <laughs> that's yeah. really fun line. <laughs> yeah, they, mm. they can just ignore that and um because mm -hmm. you, you cannot save the knight it just has nowhere to go mm -hmm. you could go to e4 but, but then, then, then yeah 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 the, this thing mm -hmm. is unfortunately totally busted so the, the funny thing is that black has to look at this uh, f7 pawn first mm. and the best seems to be this funny move yeah you just step back white takes okay. and then e6 just to, like, to gain a tempo on this and then okay. you get this funny position yeah <laughs> it looks really mm -hmm. strange black has the two bishops which is nice oh i can just right click and make it uh, okay i learned that okay so here you get the two bishops with black but your mm -hmm. pawn structure kind of sucks yeah c6 mm, yeah, yeah. It, it's still not terrible i've played this with black actually in games um, because mm -hmm. if you give me two bishops, I'm generally happy. I can suffer a lot if I have two bishops, but still it's a variation that, mm, yeah, also not, it's not the kind of thing where you like get the champagne out of the fridge. It's, it's not really <laughs> great. So this mm -hmm. is the thing with g6, they, they take and play queen b3. And finally, by the way, <clears throat> there's still also e6. It's also, also a move, but it's kind of passive, yeah? Yeah. It's kind of passive. So th that's something that I never really considered to recommend. Okay, so at the end, I, I went for this funny move A6. And the great thing about this move is that White's generally critical approach, the capture in Queen B3, is not that great really not that great so let's have a look if white takes takes and then queen b3 i, I know you probably looked at this in the course and you know what's happening here or yeah i looked in the quick starter at this um before i messaged you and then i i saw bishop piece was it bishop b6 there's a bishop b6 in some in one of the lines 
Yeah. Um, so here, Vision V6, you're completely right. You can play this now. And mm -hmm. the funny thing is that black can just ignore that the queen is attacking the pawn as queen b7, mm -hmm. knight a5 traps the queen. Yeah, so I saw that. <laughs> I, I've, had, I've had this in games, in blitz games. Yeah? Even, oh, even really? Against, yeah, even against title players. It, 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 it kind of... It doesn't seem to be on their on their radar that the queen has no squares. I mean, mm. you, you can save the queen with bishop b5, but you you're just a piece down. Mm -hmm. And just to be okay, clear, yeah. not the queen win, but it's a piece. And of course, mm -hmm. our position is excellent because they they have lost tons of time with moving the queen around. Mm -hmm. so yeah, this is really I would be pretty happy being a piece up. <laughs> I would take that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, and now the funny thing is, once we're here and the bishop e6 is on the board, mm -hmm. um, white is already in a bit of trouble because we, we threaten to move the knight. Mm. Here, um, white only has one move that is still kind of okay at least. And this is, I think, unlikely um, that white finds it. Okay. It's really, it's really difficult. I mean, what should they play? I've had some games um, in, in Blitz. I never got it in a, in a, in a real game, let's say. Yeah? That, uh, mm. I haven't played much much over the board chess, so it's all about uh, online games that I'm talking about. And I said I got this on the board. So let's say they play Bishop B2, just to continue this variation a bit. Mm -hmm. um, here, black has a great position. What would you play? Any ideas what you would do? Um, I would want to play g6 and get castled, but I don't know what's best. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad move at all. I mean, we don't have to worry about b7. There's still knight a5, so we, we don't mm -hmm. have to... Yeah. cover the pawn which is important we don't need to spend mm -hmm. time on that mm -hmm. um g6 is certainly good what what i would prefer is mm -hmm. personally i would take on c3 here okay just because it's so forcing like if we take they have to take with the queen no other move the queen is attacked by the bishop so queen yeah. has to take. and the next move that i would like to play is probably bishop to d5 just for clarity if you if you just mm -hmm. like in this position we know they have the isolated pawn we, we are sure mm -hmm. about that now the bishop yeah. is sitting great on d5 so they cannot push the pawn forward mm -hmm. and what's nice the queen is really completely misplaced on c3 because we will have a rook c8 move coming sooner or later mm -hmm. when they have to worry about our knight jumping and then they probably will have to move the queen again and the queen doesn't have good squares. I would still want to play g6, bishop, g7. But what what I want to emphasize is like the, the clarity of the solution. Yeah. No, you're, yeah. As g6, you can, I don't know, you could do whatever. Yeah. And, and you still have to think about it. And mm -hmm. like here, I, I know that I have a target, the pawn on d4, mm -hmm. that I can attack. And it, it's really easy to continued because we know we put everything on the pawn. So here it's already tricky for white. The best move, and again, that's actually difficult for anyone to find, is knight g5. I just want to show it briefly. Um, mm -hmm. At first, this looks completely disastrous because it blunders d4. Hmm. You, you can take it, of course. We take it. Yeah. Queen check attacking the knight knight has to go back and then white can take and it's now a pawn down but they have a bit of compensation it is not quite enough but it is the relatively best thing to get it's still nothing that white would ever go for voluntarily but it's kind of yeah kind of the, the relatively best solution so mm. the good thing about this a6 line is that this direct attempt at a refutation, like taking and queen b3, which is the best thing 
that they would do against the other lines, that this is not good, hmm. which is a huge plus if you think about this in terms of surprise value. Yeah, because people very often will play the idea that they know. And it's actually, if you think about it, like you would be on the white side and you would look at this position. Wouldn't you think that A6 must be a less useful move than G6? Yeah, Clearly, or Bishop sure. G4. But <laughs> due to this being enabled because Queen B7 mm. is not a move, it's very difficult to anticipate Bishop E6. Mm. However, people might know it, of course, and play something better. So what else can they do? I mean, they can definitely take like here and, and now play something else. Any suggestions? What, what would be a good move? What, what else White could do? Um... Well, they could develop the light squared bishop and castle. Um, yeah, for sure. That must be best, yeah, I think. The best mm -hmm. move is very likely bishop c4. Mm -hmm. I, I would also want to stress that this is very likely much better than bishop e2. Yeah. Because white wants to be as active as possible eh, and attack the knight. If they play something like this, something slow again, g6 is the one. So against all those slowish things like bishop okay. 2 or they could also go here, for example. Mm -hmm. You can always play g6, bishop g7, and castle. This is really important that never e6 in this kind mm -hmm. of situation because here mm -hmm. we get the even better g6-based development going. Bishop mm -hmm. c4 is better because it forces a decision by black. Yeah. And here I think um, best is bishop e6. It looks a little bit strange maybe yeah, to put the bishop in front of the pawn, but it's kind of commonplace here for concrete reasons. We are now threatening to win a piece with knight c3. Mm -hmm. And this means white has to again do something about it it's not um they cannot just castle and best mm -hmm. is probably bishop b3 however i have to say i've had stuff like um this played against me in games and again black is in great shape because we have excellent control over d5 mm -hmm. and this is a key a key thing to have against the isolated pawn we want to control the square in front of the pawn and this is working very well here no I, I think black is already a little bit better is it also some how does this bar actually work like zero is um at um like in the at the middle of the board right oh, yeah. uh so, yeah so if you hover over it with your mouse it will tell you what the mine is 0 0.7 i just that i understand the interface mm -hmm. which is kind of fair because i mean black should be a little bit better here already mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the thing about the isolated pawn. It is not a um, generally bad structure, but it turns it often turns bad if yeah. it's not handled properly. And like here, white is already traded a little bit too much. Like the knight trade on d5 is a pretty pretty lame approach. And and we have this nice control of the square. So mm -hmm. this is pretty lame. They can go bishop b3, however. This is better. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> generic villain says i wonder about knight g5 in this line after bishop e6 this is indeed a move yeah this is indeed a move we can talk about this um once i have shown um the idea after bishop b3 mm -hmm. so here bishop b3 um i think um the the best way to go is knight a5 here trying to get rid of this very strong bishop that's an important mm -hmm. piece for wise they will likely keep it, go to c2, and then <clears throat> I suggest g6 again to complete um, kingside castling. Is that a position that you would generally feel comfortable in, or would you feel a little bit uncomfortable with this kind of situation? I think that um, I would probably not know exactly when I'm 
I mean, I assume at some point this bishop moves and we play e6 after full development, maybe. I don't know. But I, I think I would just be... The, this is The bishop on e6 is the only piece I would be unsure about later in the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know, it looks a little bit odd, but it has, a, it has some good ideas. I mean, if we yeah. continue this a little bit, just with some normal-looking mm -hmm. moves, let's say. Mm -hmm. Their castle, bishop g7... Maybe a rookie one. I'm just mm -hmm. I'm just putting yeah. some so that both sides have cancelled. So mm -hmm. so what is the strategy here? What would be your general strategy? Like something that would help? Like what, what would be helpful for black here? What do you think? Um I would probably want to at some point play Rick C8. I would probably want to move this knight from A5. Um at some point back more centrally um yeah i guess we want to blockade the deep one but i just don't know about keeping the bishop here we definitely yeah. uh, you're right and we want to keep that square on d5 yeah. under control. it's mm -hmm. a nice square in the middle of the board that also makes sure that they cannot push their pawn forward yeah. so we want to keep control of that square in front of the pawn we also ideally want to pressurize the d4 pawn itself. Mm -hmm. In some cases, even get, getting the knight just back can be an idea. Mm -hmm. Not impossible. But a thing that is also important to see is it can be an idea for black to simply take on c3. Okay. That is maybe not the, the first thing that comes to mind because you think we are improving white's pawn structure because they wouldn't mm -hmm. have an isolated pawn anymore. But taking um, only changes the pawn structure. It doesn't necessarily improve it so much for white. That is important to see. In this position, and I have to say, I don't know why it's white's move. Yeah, it's kind of kind of a mess of moves here already uh, on the right hand side. Yeah. So let, let's say white plays a, a slower move. Yeah. Just to, I just want to illustrate the idea. Mm -hmm. So if you take on c3, white recaptures, the pawn structure has changed, but white still has weaknesses. So they have this c3 pawn that can be a target for the rook. We still can use d5 now for the bishop. That is actually a nice feature of the bishop on e6. I can sometimes yeah. switch to d5. And in this situation, the knight on a5 might jump to c4 also mm -hmm. and now i have too many too many arrows but taking on c3 is an important strategic idea that is often yeah underappreciated because mm. people think hmm isn't that helping white but it's not really the case it is just changing the structure but mm -hmm. not to something that is extremely favorable for white what white has in this situation is um pretty active pieces so if you think about you know, the rook is on a nice open file, they could put this on an open file. The bishop mm -hmm. has active square. So what white is doing, and this is a general feature of the Panov, is trading peace activity for structural deficits. So they have structural problems. Again, here, uh, c3, d4, the squares in front of the pawns, like these here are weak mm -hmm. here, so we can use yeah. them. And this is something that, what I said at the very beginning, I generally like. I'm, I'm pretty happy when they, when they have some weaknesses that I can play against long term. What is, however, important, you always have to try. It's not easy. I often fail at that, actually, um, to think prophylactically. Just like thinking, what, what active thing could they throw at me? And this is really important all the time because we kind of claiming, okay, are you weakening yourself? This will be bad for you in the long run, but it doesn't help us if they just, as I sometimes say, they come with a big club and <laughs> hit you on the head. Yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't help so much to point at the pawn structure if you're just like, ugh. Yeah. So this is important. Mm -hmm. Always keep in mind that they, they have some activity. Mm -hmm. So... This is a deep variation already, but it's, I think it's important to understand the strategy. You shouldn't be afraid of the capture on c3. That's an important one. If you can control those squares, like 
C4, D5, it's sometimes a good idea to take. Mm -hmm. So there was a remark about the move knight g5 in this position. Mm. Okay, this is an interesting move and not a bad move. However, it has very, very funny consequences. Um, doesn't that look like black is winning immediately? Oh, it does look like you would win the bishop, but I guess, um, I mean, if they take, they if they capture the bishop, our bishop with that knight, then they're attacking our queen as well. Um, but then I, I guess that would still be better for us. Yeah. I mean, the simple line, I just want to show the viewers, yeah. right? I mean, th this is clearly yeah. a disaster. We just a piece up. Well, yeah, so yeah. The, the things that we mm -hmm. have to check is why taking only six. And white mm -hmm. could take yeah. the bishop. Okay. Take the queen. They take our queen. I think we would probably take the knight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As much, yeah. No, I didn't see here that we um, got the bishop. It's a, it's a long line. I mean, we can probably improve with white a little bit, so we don't have to lose immediately. But it's good for black. Yeah. Yeah. However, however, there is in fact a funny possibility here that somebody who's extremely cunning might play. They can actually play this move, which is really crazy. But that is an interesting move. Take mm. the queen. They take. Oh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> something that, that you have to check. <laughs> okay, they okay. they give a check here. That, that's the best one. I mean, we are, we are queen up. Yeah, they they have to do something, mm -hmm. something drastic. So here, and here, it's funny. You can go to c seven and run away with the with with the king. But mm. this is kind of, you have to really have good nerves to do that. <laughs> like, I mean, is that, a, is that a thing? You want to sit there in Chennai and, and they, they chase your thing around? <laughs> Probably not. So, and I kind of understand. I also don't want, wouldn't want to do that. You can, you can take a draw here, <laughs> which okay. is not, not a bad thing. I mean, it's just an interesting thing to, to know, right? That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Knight, knight g5 is kind of, it's a crazy move, but mm -hmm. it does kind of work. So here, if you absolutely have to win the game, you can do that. This is not losing or anything. It's just extremely difficult to play. Yeah. yeah? yeah. But you can always take the draw, mm -hmm. which is, I think, kind of OK in this uh, situation, if <laughs> it would happen. But it's, it's really unlikely. I mean, just like from a probability standpoint, mm -hmm. would someone play yeah. knight to five and have this elaborate idea to force a draw? I, it's kind of kind of odd, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it's fun to know. It has been played against me in a blitz game. Oh, really? Yeah, by mm. by Mark Esserman. Um, he's a oh. very aggressive. Uh, yeah. Player. He wrote this book on the Smith Mora and. Uh, Mark played that and I was like, what the heck is that? And I took the draw and then immediately <laughs> fired up the engine and looked at it and it's like, oh, crazy. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not, um, it's not really threatening in a way because we can always take that draw. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the capture on d5 and then, sorry, and then bishop c4. I think mm -hmm. this is, in fact, if we go back to this a6 stuff, the most likely line to happen. Mm -hmm. Like no, white will very likely take on d5 as they do that in the other lines. And mm -hmm. maybe they figure out that queen b3 is not so great. Mm -hmm. It also this bishop c4, I mean, exactly this variation is what usually the, the computers um, give as one of the, the best options. So if somebody actually with white prepares this, they will probably end here and, and play mm -hmm. it. So this okay. is therefore pretty important I mean, to, to, to know. However, mm -hmm. 
White could also do other stuff, of course. What else is there? They could do something slow again, as I said, like bishop e2, bishop e3. In those cases, you would be safe to go g6. Okay, yeah. The thing is, if they do this and you go g6, you, you always have to consider this, but it doesn't work or it doesn't help because that always works, mm -hmm. this trick. And the same would be if they, I don't know, go here and you can go g6 as the same thing and this is a particularly ridiculous because you could take e3 but bishop e6 would order would still work this this mm -hmm. tactical idea that b7 cannot be taken so as a kind of rule of thumb if white is doing something slow then g6 does work well and you don't really need to know much more at least i don't know much more i, I always know if they play something slow i go g6 mm -hmm. And I'm generally quite happy. An interesting option, which is totally different, however, is the move c5. That's mm. something that we should check because it is a totally different structure. That's not an isolated pawn. Um, do you have ever, <clears throat> sorry, a suggestion what what to play here against c5? Um. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Um, can you play g6 or not? g6? Sorry, I didn't. Yeah. Didn't get yeah. That. Can you play yeah. g6? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. It's it's still um, if, if we just think about where would the bishop ideally want to be? It's the same situation as before as mm -hmm. If you look at what is white's weak spot, that's the d4 pawn. That is yeah. the weakest pawn spot. So the bishop on g7 would put pressure on the pawn. And um, here, someone in the chat mentioned e5. That is really true. The e5 square is really important. White is controlling currently e5. And we would like mm -hmm. to fight for that square. And in some cases, uh, maybe we even manage e5 at some point, like push the pawn it would take a while until mm -hmm. we have enough control over that square so that the move is possible just just from a general um understanding perspective we want the bishop mm -hmm. on g7 and we definitely never would want to play this move this is totally terrible mm -hmm. like no, don't lock that bishop in and there's no pressure on the pawn on d4 so here i think there are mostly two good moves g6 which is um, mm -hmm. what you suggested and the other good move is uh, bishop g4. That also makes a okay. sense. Like we get the bishop out, pin this knight. And mm -hmm. you could argue that it is helpful to remove the knight on f3 because it is controlling, importantly, e5 and d4. Mm. And it wouldn't be terrible to simply hack the knight off. Like just say they, I don't know, play bishop e2, and we would simply take it. This kind of structure would be fine. As with g6, bishop g7, we have pressure here, and we mm -hmm. don't have any bad piece. The, the bishop on c8, it's sometimes not so easy to find the future for this piece. Yeah. Where would it go? f5 is an idea, and sometimes just g4 and taking is not bad at all. So here you have two good options g6 or um, bishop g4. I don't even remember what I have in the course, actually. I don't know what it is. Because both, <laughs> both moves look fine. Both, both look no, fine. I, I trade off the light squared bishop a lot in the Karakan for that f3 yeah. knight. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it would be a thing. Bishop g4. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't know yeah. really what, what I would do. But both moves look good. And okay. it, it's actually not necessary to know all the time like it's exactly this move or that move it's just mm -hmm. like here it's important never go e6 as long yeah. as the bishop is on the board mm -hmm. and generally speaking g6 bishop g7 makes sense as the d4 pawn is always going to be a target this is also something like from a general perspective like here if we go back to the very beginning mm -hmm. they will never be able almost never be able to cover d4 anymore with a pawn Mm. Like only in these scenarios where there's a knight on c3 and we take it. 
So there's mm -hmm. very unlikely that white will ever have a superior pawn structure. Mm -hmm. They have an isolated D pawn, or they can get this structure where we take on C3 later, which I might or might not find in this maze of lines. <laughs> where is it again? Um, um, we, had, we had an example of that. We did. Um... Um, interesting. I will find it somewhere. No, that was not it. Uh, look, it's, no. it's kind of similar. No. Let me just check. Uh -huh. That must be bishop c4, bishop e6, bishop b3. Yeah, here in this in this scenario, we had a later capture. Mm. But even here, oh, white's yeah. pawn structure is kind of hmm, yeah, a, a little a little bit a little bit weaker. So um, if we go back to to this a6. Mm -hmm. What else can white do? As I said, mostly I think they will take on d5. A move that is not bad is bishop g5. That could also happen. Mm -hmm. But this is um, also line one move earlier. Against bishop g5, it's important to, to get this move right. The, the first move here is actually kind of important. I don't know if you remember it. It's not... This bishop v5 is not a, a main move here, but it's important to get the next one right because they are threatening to take on f6 and on d5. Yes. And yeah, no, I see this quite a lot, I think, when and then I get stressed about my d pawn. <laughs> yeah, then I do understand. I mean, this is the thing with playing a non e6 line. Like, if you just to, to compare this, this here, yeah, this is the most conservative move that you can play. And it's not terrible. Um, mm -hmm. Here, you have to worry a lot less about the d-pawn. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's very safely covered, but it's also not so ambitious. Mm -hmm. you, you don't get this bishop out and everything yeah. comes with the price tag. So with mm -hmm. knight c6 and then later a6, we, we kind of want a little bit more and hope yeah, that... Of course. White is not playing in the best way and actually giving us even sometimes an advantage. It can it can easily happen. So here it's important to see they threaten to take on f6 and on d5. Yeah. And we only have one good move here. That is the somewhat odd looking move, bishop b6. Okay. It's again placing the bishop in front of the pawn mm -hmm. but this is a good solution here we, we cover d5 this way and we don't have to worry about um white taking our knight mm -hmm. as this would actually nicely develop us yeah it's not a thing that double pawn is actually quite helpful eh? covering, mm. covering squares so bishop g5 is, is more of a more of a sideline here, but mm -hmm. it could happen. I think in most cases, if white wants to go bishop g5 at all, they will likely do this here already. Yeah, I think I get this line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've definitely seen bishop bishop g5 here. Yeah, and. Yeah. Here it's important to not confuse the two lines, knight f3, g5, <laughs> because they're really completely different. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I I wasn't um, super enthusiastic about when I created this repertoire. It's always good to have like like one size fits all solution or one mm -hmm. setup that would always work, but that yeah. is just not possible here after bishop g5. They threaten too much, right? let's say they threaten to take on f6 and on d5, mm -hmm. and we don't have time for a move like a6 or, or g6 or, or something like that. We yeah. have to really react now to, to the threat that white is coming up with. Um, Black has, um, I think, two good moves here one that i originally wanted to recommend and one that i ended up mm -hmm. recommending um i suggest to to take the pawn now on c4 and okay. this is really something that it starts concrete play like move by move calculation in a way where it's very good to know what's happening like you have to just learn some lines so they take 
and we take on c4 and now mm -hmm. the interesting thing is the d4 pawn is attacked which is why it's it's getting pretty concrete yeah we attack the pawn on d4 and um interestingly enough if you play this even against fairly um strong players um you meet d5 a lot that white pushes the pawn forward mm -hmm. and this is um pretty sharp pretty tactical in a way but it's fine for black and I'm, I'm surprised that people still play this because if black knows what they're doing white doesn't have anything at all yeah after this jump to e5 and the line that they play is queen d4 again going for this as active as possible kind of play mm. <clears throat> when as i said you have to just know stuff it's what it is like h6 is best here it's okay. not super yeah. obvious then we you just a, have to know these ones yeah okay we make a counter attack on the bishop bishop usually goes back because like here we have a nice recapture where we cover the knight mm -hmm. so they go back and then it, it doesn't really matter if they go here or to f4 and then we go okay. to g6 more or less winning a tempo as they want mm. the bishop to stay on the board bishop g3 yeah and here you have two good options you can play e6 which is already yeah more or less killing the game a white cannot hope for any advantage like e6 they can take here we take here <clears throat> and we just get lots of trades and equality mm -hmm. is one possibility or what i also have in the course is the more um the, the far sharper move e5 when <clears throat> white can grab the pawn but black gets very nice compensation for it which is really really sharp i mean white gets the c4 can castle queen side have a very open king position pretty pretty tough for white actually but it's also something that, that you need to know beforehand this is mm -hmm. um, also something that is generally true about the pun off as white is so aggressive it's something where you just have to know some stuff you cannot yeah. with black get by with uh, like very general principles you might might be able to get away with general principles if you play something um like this early e6 which as i said is more conservative but mm. it's not so fun yeah no so this is one line where they push the pawn forward and the second line which is nowadays considered actually the the best one is this one where they simply recapture mm -hmm. and sacrifice the pawn however i don't recommend taking the pawn as it is really dangerous very dangerous okay. to take the pawn i just want to show you briefly what could happen just to show like why does that and now you have to be extremely careful it, it does work that's not bad mm. for black but it's extremely um difficult to play Stressful. and like one misstep can easily lead to disaster you can go e5 for example and they have f4 and this is a line that again is like uh, i don't know move 20 or deeper i think black is ultimately okay but it's it's risky and uh, I, mm. I'm not a fan. I don't like to grab pawns and then suffer or I have to <laughs> know all kinds of things. Um, so here, just playing e6 is a simple and good solution, which is admittedly a bit different than the g stick stuff that we play in the other lines. But here, it's just not possible to get. And mm. what I show a little bit in the course is that here, Black's position is also looking perfectly okay. Something like this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Go b5 and bishop b7 to finally yeah. get this bishop out. We're always a bit worried about the bishop, of course. So having it on b7 at the end makes a lot of sense. Um, this 
position, however, or this line is also interesting for white. So if white is looking for something to play in the pun off against this whole complex, that's probably what I would recommend for white player. Mm. It is an isolated D pawn, but uh, all the pieces are very active. Like this, this is not, not looking like a bad position, right? So everything mm -hmm. looks very, very reasonable. Um, if you want to go go deeper into into those variations and these positions in general, it makes a lot of sense to to just study isolated queen pawn positions. That is something that mm. will happen a lot in your games, not just from here, but in in all kinds of openings. It can happen. Yeah. Um, I know that um, you also play the French defense, right? Mm -hmm. Do you play variations in the French defense where you have an isolated pawn yourself? Um, I try to avoid getting an isolated pawn if I can avoid it. But sometimes it seems to just happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I really, really try to avoid it. Like there's a joke in my, my community make fun of me because of how afraid I am of having an isolated queen pawn. I really don't. I'm not a very, I'm not like a super aggressive attacking player. So I don't really like having, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, usually I'm on the other side like this where I, my opponent has it. Yeah, so you're saying you don't want an IQP, yeah, but sometimes you just <laughs> cannot avoid getting it, right? Well, so sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of understand because when I started out with chess, mm -hmm. I, I generally also didn't like to get them. Um, because mm -hmm. always like, man, they, they could be weak, yeah. However, <laughs> It's something when when you study this a little bit, and I mean we're not doing a lesson here on 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 middle game strategy or so, right? I mean, but you mm -hmm. you have done done those as well. Mm -hmm. I think it makes a lot of sense to study some isolated queen pawn positions that okay. are really good for the side with the isolated pawn because you want to appreciate a little bit what a good version of the structure is and what a not so good version of the structure is because. Yeah. In some cases, you just have to take a very good version of the structure. You don't have to love it, like go actively for isolated pawns all the time. It's possible. Mm -hmm. You can really build up a repertoire around that if you if you mm -hmm. like that. Um, for example, you you mentioned um, that you also would like some advice against one d4. Yeah? I can give you just one one particular opening variation, let's say you're black mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you will play this move, mm -hmm. so-called Tarash defense mm -hmm. to the Queen's Gambit. Like yeah. if they take here, you know what that is? That is a reverse pawn off. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing. It's just a pawn uh, tempo yes. down yeah, for like, and you mm -hmm. get an IQP in this variation all the time, mm -hmm. all of the yeah. time. And if you are a specialist in that, I mean, it's okay when, when you can play it. But if white knows what they're doing, and I mean, they are tempo up on our lines against the panel, mm -hmm. yeah. um, they're often a little bit, a little bit better, maybe. So playing those positions all of the time takes a lot of dedication, like you really need to like to play with the pawn. But what everybody should be able to is recognize when you can get a really good version, like something mm. that really is fun to play and where the activity that you get is easily, um, let's say, overcompensating for the structural problem. This is important. And it's something that I always did in when, when I was still giving lessons. I don't do that anymore that much. Um, I was always trying to show upsides and downsides yeah? because the IQP is something that you would sometimes just need to get yeah because they just offer it to you like uh, you can go for it and if you if you always say no that's going yeah. to be a weakness in your game like automatically yeah it's like um you, you just have to take up uh, let's say good offers if they if they come to you mm -hmm. <clears throat> So going all the way back. So
So we had a look at this just to kind of see where we where we where we were. Is there anything else? I mean, this bishop g5 is definitely not a bad move. And it's probably something that you should look at a little bit if you intend to play um, the Karo and expect the pun off. But it's not played as often as knight a3. Like, like just from um, percentage play perspective, knight a3 is a, a little bit more important to study. However, in the Olympiad, um, you have 11 rounds, right? Do well in the pun-off <laughs> if it happens. <laughs> oh, I'll try. I'll do, Brad. I'll try. I'll try my best. Um, okay. So yeah. Okay, so lots of luck for the event. Have a good flight to India. That would be uh, my my most scary part of the whole thing. Anyway. <laughs> so. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christoph. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.